Spanthazir here. I was recently tagged by Retro Rivals to find five games that are $10 or less that I own in my collection that I suggest to other people. Those are pretty much the rules as far as I'm concerned, and at the end I will tag two other people. So let's get started. My list isn't in any particular order, but my first game is going to be Super Lucky's Tale for Xbox. This game is very full of charm, and it's a platformer, which if you know anything about me, I love platformers. Now, is it going to be on the same level as, like, Mario? Maybe not. I think the game is fun, it's full of charm, and you can get it for $8.70 on the Xbox One. Now, this game might be a little bit more expensive if you do, like, the PS4 or the Switch version, but this game is still relatively cheap, and it's a lot of fun. It's really cutesy. It's very just, I don't know, it's got a different character to it that you don't get in the other platformers. You know, it's got a lot of the same aspects where you platform, different levels have different challenges, there's different characters that you meet, um, the same premise of like you are sometimes on one part of the level and then you shoot back to the back side and then you come forward. There's some collectibles, you can interact with the map. But as far as I am aware, this is kind of a shut your brain off and kind of coast through the game type thing. It's not completely overly challenging. Some of the levels can get a little irritating, but other than that, pretty solid game. This next one is pretty much fueled by nostalgia and nostalgia alone. And to me, it's kind of a weird game to have nostalgia for, but Tetris 2 on the Super Nintendo. This is my all-time favorite way to play Tetris, and I know there's like a million ways to play this game, and it's been around forever, but if you want to beef up your Super Nintendo collection and you like Tetris, it's got fun backgrounds, it's got fun music. I don't know what it is, but this version of it is just a little bit more relaxing to me. It's got a little bit more charm to it, and like I said, I had it as a kid, so there is a little bit of nostalgia feeling this. It, this game is literally like at $10 and I didn't say this before but I am using price charting as a reference. Now I've looked up some of these games like outside of price charting and it seems like it can vary just like most of the video game market but price charting says $10. This next one is a silly one and I don't even know how I came across this game and this is gonna be a lot from memory because I haven't played it in a little while but Brutal Legends is a game where Jack Black plays the main character and he's like a rocker and you're basically in an area that kind of reminds me of HE double hockey sticks but they got like real rock and roll people to interact in this game be voice actors you get metal music as you're playing and it's kind of like a hack and slash but you also gather minions to help take down towers and it's got a really silly storyline and this one's for the Xbox 360 for nine dollars and 33 cents so this game is 100% worth a playthrough. It is silly, you don't take it seriously, and it's got that charm that Jack Black seems to bring to everything he works on. And if you like metal, the music is freaking amazing. So if you haven't played Brutal Legends for the Xbox 360, I would pick that one up now. Oh man, don't tell me I've been slaying hot girls this whole time. This next one has been a major pain in my rear because I wanted to play it a little bit before the video. I only own the disc and I couldn't get it to work. Tried to get a resurface, still didn't work. So this one's also going to be from memory. But Flat Out was a game that I played early on in my life that was very different than the typical like car racer games. You start out with this like junker car, like that looks like it rolled out of a like literal junkyard and you race uh, different people to basically earn money to build up your car. And that's like one of my all time favorite things in a racing game is being able to build up and customize your car. Now in this one, the car is pretty much never gonna be pretty. It's literally supposed to be like a demolition derby car, but the races are really fun. Um, the controls are fair enough. And there's some mini games where you can like throw your character out of the car at a target. It's just, uh, it's very like grungy and a lot of fun just kind of seeing the different levels and how you can build up your car and it doesn't really take itself too seriously it's like that edgier need for speed type game and flat out is uh, about nine dollars and 62 cents uh for the complete copy not disc only i just happened to find mine for three bucks which it doesn't work anyway next on my list is one of my all-time personal favorites and it ended up basically being like a demo disc for the Wii U. 
Nintendo Land, this game is roughly about $8.67. I've seen this game on the cheaper end for a long time. I think I ended up picking up my second copy because I was going to give it to somebody for 10 bucks. It ended up not working out. So now I have two copies of it and that's fine with me. But Nintendo Land is a very unique game because for me, it's a very, very fun party game. There's a bunch of games where you can play between one to, I believe, five characters, and then like two to five, and then there's individual. So there's a lot of room to play here, not only by yourself, but with your friends. Mario Chase being one of my favorites, where one of you is Mario and the others are Toads, and you have to chase Mario around the map, and you've got a little like measure meter up top to tell you how like far you are from Mario. And it's just a really fun group setting game where you're trying to chase your friends, and every time you know Mario gets caught, you just pass the gamepad around and the next person plays or like the Luigi's like mansion type one where somebody's the ghost and the other are the people searching. You know, the flashlight gets the ghost, the ghost gets the people, pretty easy. Um, and the Animal Crossing one I think is a little challenging for some people because you have to control both knobs at the same time if you're the guards, which personally for me, I've always found fun. Um, it's really funny because your animals will, your, the goal is to like pick up candy and have like the most by, or have like a certain amount by the end of the level. And uh, if the guards are coming towards you, you can just like purge them out. And so every time like somebody was coming close to you, we'd be start yelling like purge, purge, and the candy would all come out and then you'd have to go back and get it. But this game is a lot of fun. Even if you only play it by yourself, it does utilize the Wii controllers as well. If you play like the Legend of Zelda mini game, whoever's got the Wii is gonna be the, the swordsman. Whoever's got the gamepad is gonna be the archer. And you play through quite a few levels of this like Legend of Zelda themed thing. but every level that's in here is all like nintendo themed like metroid and the uh the octopus from like the old game and watch games and i think even there's like a captain falcon one so there's a lot to be had in this game all for eight dollars and 67 cents and it's so much fun to play with friends bonus everyone else had a bonus game so i chose one with bonus games more than one so mega man anniversary has 10 traditional mega man games on it like one two three so on and so forth. All of these like classic Mega Man games all in one disc. And this is like $9.78 for a complete copy of it. And you get 10 Mega Man games. Now I'm not gonna pretend like I'm good at Mega Man games, but they are classics for a reason. They're good platforming games. I personally always get my butt handed to me, but if you're looking for a good collection of retro games to play and not breaking the bank, because I can only imagine how much it would cost you to get all the original Mega Man games on the NES, this is cheaper and it's a good way to utilize your Xbox. I personally am not the biggest Xbox person, but it's cool to have a collection like that. So when I want to go get my butt handed to me, I only have to do it for $9 and some odd cents. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you Retro Rivals for tagging me. I now have to pick two people. So I'm going to pick RNG Gamer, chooses his games randomly, but not this time, right? <laughs> and Gamer Aimer, another female gamer, might as well keep that trend going. Two people I really enjoy interacting with, and if you haven't checked out their channels for some reason, which I can't imagine you've never heard of them, go check them out. I'll tag them down below. But thank you all again so much for watching. I hope you found any of these picks something that you may be interested in. If you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below of some games that are $10 or less that you think should be in my collection. But don't forget, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you.